Hi there, Kendra Tolbert here. I'm a registered dietitian and yoga teacher, and I specialize in women's health and fertility. And this is our fifth video in our multi-part preconception preparation series. This is the third video where we will be talking about the menstrual cycle. In the first menstrual cycle video, we talked about the different phases of the cycle and the kind of normal things to expect around those different phases of your cycle. And in the second video, we talked all about cervical mucus and how you can use your cervical mucus as a way to figure out when the best time to have sex would be for you to optimize your chances of conceiving. And in this video, we are going to talk about basal body temperature. So what is basal body temperature? Basal body temperature is defined as the lowest natural non-pathologic body temperature recorded after a period of rest. That definition includes both what it is and when it should be taken. It should be taken after your longest period of rest, whatever time of day or night that might be for you. So if you are a shift worker, the recommendation to take it first thing in the morning may not be the time that you are actually waking up from your longest period of sleep. So you will take your basal body temperature based on when you wake up, even if that's later in the day or in the afternoon, because that would be the time after your longest period of rest. Ideally, you'll want to be taking it immediately upon waking from that period of rest that is hopefully at least four to five consecutive hours. And you want to take it before you have anything to drink, before you have anything to eat, before you talk, and definitely before you get up out of bed. Now let's talk about how you check your basal body temperature. First, you choose a device, and there are a lot of different devices out there. There are thermometers that can be used orally, vaginally, or underneath the armpit, and those would be digital thermometers or glass thermometers. I really like digital thermometers for a number of reasons. I don't trust myself with the glass ones. I'm afraid I'll break it. But besides that, I like that a lot of them, you can actually save your your numbers in or your temperatures in so that you don't have to immediately write them down and you won't lose the number because you can always revisit at a later time in the day when you decide to write down your basal body temperature value. I personally use a digital thermometer orally. I find that to be the easiest and the most convenient. So that is what I'm most familiar with, but people do use them vaginally or in their armpits. So that is an option as well. There are also wearable devices such as the Aura Ring, the Ava bracelet, and the Temp Drop, which is worn around the upper arm. And the last category of devices is insertable devices. I'm only familiar with one insertable device that checks the basal body temperature, and that is OvuSense. As I said earlier, I am most familiar with and comfortable with, and honestly a fan of, digital basal body thermometers. They tend to be the least expensive and the easiest to get on the ground. You don't even have to order them online, although you can definitely order them online. And I will link to my favorite digital basal body thermometer in the description box below. You'll want to read the instruction manual that comes with whichever device you choose to determine how to use it best, because it's only by following the manufacturer's instructions that you can actually trust the results that you get. So make sure you know exactly how to use the device that you have chosen, whichever one it might be. So we know what it is. We know how to check it. Let's talk about what affects our basal body temperature. So a number of things actually affect our basal body temperature, but the main category that we're gonna focus in on are our changes in hormones that coincide with the different phases of our cycle. So during the follicular phase or the pre-ovulatory phase of our cycle, estrogen is the dominant sex hormone. And estrogen actually lowers our basal body temperature. So during that phase of our cycle, we are going to have relatively lower basal body temperatures. Except of course, like if we're sick or something else is going on, that alters that number. 
during the post-ovulatory or luteal phase of our menstrual cycle, progesterone is the dominant sex hormone, and it actually raises our basal body temperature. And that shift in temperature is what we refer to as the temp shift. These relatively higher temperatures that occur during the luteal phase as a result of this higher progesterone is what allows us to use our basal body temperature as a way to determine if we have likely ovulated and are now in our luteal phase. And that can also let us know approximately how long our luteal phase actually is so that if it is shorter than we would expect it to be, we can have a conversation with our doctor early on. While these higher temperatures can let us know whether or not we've likely ovulated and how long, just about how long, our luteal phase is, it cannot tell us if our body is gearing up for ovulation. So it should not be used as a way of timing sex to increase your chances of trying to conceive if you are trying to conceive. I have spoken to a number of people who have waited until their temp shift to have sex. The problem with that is that the temp shift typically occurs after ovulation has already happened. And by then, it's likely too late. You actually wanna have sex before ovulation to optimize your chances of conceiving. So it's really important that you know how to determine when you are in your fertile window and when your peak fertility days are. And I did a video all about that, which I will link in the description box below. There's a lot more that we could talk about when it comes to the menstrual cycle, but I really am ready to move on to a new topic. So if you are someone who would like to know even more, I highly recommend that you check out the resources that I've linked to in the description box. I have some great books and courses and podcasts and fertility awareness educators that I have linked to down there so that you can learn even more. And you can also learn how to use fertility awareness methods as a birth control method. What I have been sharing here should not be used, I mean this, should not be used as a way of using fertility awareness or cycle tracking to avoid pregnancy. What I have been sharing has been stuff to prepare you for conception, to help you to get to know your cycle and help you identify when you are most likely to conceive. So if you are wanting to use this information for contraception, don't, don't, mm -mm. work with a fertility awareness educator one-on-one -on -one for that. All right, I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Be well and bye for now.